Well, uh, my attitude, like media, is a big issue, obviously. And my attitude toward all of that is the culture is toxic. Like, here's the thing, like, probably Esalen is the place where the idea was born uh, that there are healing images, that you can heal your body and your mind through the images that you hold in your head. But I've never heard a really intelligent discussion of the implication of that. If there are healing images, there are destroying images, there are sickening images, there are toxic images, and uh, you can bet which are being pervaded uh, in the mass culture, because uh, the purpose of capitalism is to imprint its products in your mind, and shock is an excellent way to do it. And the two areas where, as a primate, you can be gotten at most quickly is in the area of sex and violence. And so these themes, for commercial purposes, are just played like crazy. So my response to all of this is to to say it's a meme war, is what it is. It's a, a struggle over how shall the world be seen and felt. And as long as you're just consuming the memes coming down through the toxic distribution system, you're a victim and a mark. And so what we have to do is produce, produce, send stuff up the wire. And that's why I think the web is so fascinating. And as I said, I think of it as a uh, 60 million channel TV. And uh, so whatever your bent is, you should put your message out there. And uh, we should all produce as much art as possible. I mean, I think the leisure and the indulgence that is permitted us, the super rich of this world, and we all are in that class, the upper 5% of the Earth's population, uh, you can't live with yourself unless you give something back. And the thing to give back is uh, share your art, share your soul. The reason we are so controlled and abused and misused by our institutions is because we are divided from each other. You know, they have divided us by race, by class, by sex, by political style, all of these ways. When in fact, you know, it's in everybody's interest to have a future, to build a world where children can be uh, raised with some reasonable expectation that social, you know, humanity will be uh, preserved. So these mass media uh, things, radio, television, and newspapers that have arisen in the last couple of hundred years, this is where a very small group of people uh, literally set the agenda for millions and millions of people. It's called top-down or one-to-many communication. Uh, What the web holds out is this thing called any-to-any communication. You and I can form a secret society. We can form a secret society of 10 people. I can send email to 10,000 people if I want. Uh, The playing field has been tremendously leveled. And then the quality of what we produce can tip the balance still further. Uh, So I think, uh, and the tools that are put in our hands now, uh, you know, director, Photoshop, all of these things uh, make it possible to communicate outside of these print-created monolithic institutions. We can't really even imagine a world like that. Uh, There hasn't been a world like that since late Roman times. I mean, the Roman hegemony was quite cohesive, but, you know, if you were living in a village in Armenia ruled by the Roman procurator, it wasn't touching you very, uh, very uh, heavily. And I think what people, the the idea of the citizen uh, is arguably toxic. The idea that we all are participating in some enormous polity uh, works against 
individualism. I mean, if you tried to nail me to my politics, people can't figure out whether I'm a right winger, a left winger, or what I am. I'll tell you straight out, I'm an anarchist. I am an absolute anarchist. I mean, I believe in people more than abstractions or institutions. I will always rely on people. I, you know, to a level perhaps uncomfortable for you. I remember back in the 60s, my line was, if you come upon a mob, you must join because the people understand far more than you do about what is going on. And that kind of radical commitment to freedom is going to be necessary uh, to dismantle these uh, very, very rigid power structures that are you know, being shoved down everybody's throat. And so the new culture, I think, is a, is a dispersed virtual culture on the internet that is not product oriented. Its aesthetics should rule the world and the best ideas should win. And, but we all have to stop being consumers. We have to redefine really who we are. It's a much more courageous role. I, you know, I'm about 18 months ago, I moved to Hawaii, and I've lived in Hawaii off and on many times. It was not unfamiliar to me. But living off the grid, but with the net, but, you know, 10 seconds away from climaxed Hawaiian rainforest, so I can always push back from my desk and just take a walk in the woods, I realize, I think this is how people are supposed to live dispersed over the surface of the earth, very little moving around. Vehicular travel is uh, less and less defensible. Uh, Off-grid, solar electric, information-based, and virtual community that no one can uh, track or criticize because it's all going on on the grid. Uh, I think if you're smart, you should buy real estate in extremely remote areas because soon there will be no remote areas from the point of view of the net. And uh, uh, just a very different kind of world is coming into being. It's not a good time for organizations, for massive hierarchical structures that depend on managerial control, and they know it. Uh, you know, it's interesting that corporations, you know, don't seek to grow to the size of nations because it's highly inefficient. You know, no corporation has a welfare class built into it, you know. What corporation has a component inside itself that it sends out checks to every month for not working? Well, the executive class, that's the answer to that.